Nuclear energy produces electricity and powers weapons obtained via nuclear processes such as fission, fusion, and decay. Nuclear fission of plutonium and uranium in nuclear power plants today accounts for a considerable share of a nuclear power industry's output of electricity. Nuclear power reactors are responsible for roughly 10% of global electricity and 20% of electricity in the United States. Nuclear power is the cleanest option because it does not only generate electricity but also paves the way for the use of radioisotopes and rocket propulsion. In addition to assisting in diagnosis and treatment, radioisotopes also play an important role in ocular imaging and the search for tumors. Radioisotopes are useful for forensics because they may detect traces of substances including paint, glass, gunpowder, tape, lead, and poisons. Also, radioisotopes have an effect on farming by reducing the number of pests that eat harvested crops. Many positive outcomes are associated with nuclear energy. It has a modest carbon footprint and is one of the lowest carbon energy sources. It generates a lot of power without releasing much carbon into the atmosphere. Although it is expensive to construct nuclear power plants, the generation of electricity from nuclear power plants is both safe and efficient. At the same time that it addresses the growing energy issue and global warming, it produces the fewest emissions of greenhouse gases possible. A nuclear reactor is a device that can start and regulate nuclear chain reactions, such as those that occur during fusion and fission. Nuclear power facilities utilize them to generate electricity and to propel nuclear-powered ships. In 1942, Nobel laureate Enrico Fermi constructed the first nuclear reactor under the Stagg Field football stadium at the University of Chicago. There are currently around 440 operational nuclear power plants around the world, with another 55 in the works, but the earliest nuclear reactor has been around for longer than anyone could have guessed. Incredibly, the earliest nuclear reactor dates back 2 billion years. So how did this nuclear reactor come to be when humans didn't even exist and human science and technology didn't exist 2 billion years ago? Here on this video, we'll explain how the discovery of a nuclear reactor dating back to 2 billion years has altered the course of history. During the 1950s, when the first commercial nuclear reactors were built, nuclear power became an increasingly popular energy source. Initially, it was hypothesized by scientists that natural nuclear reactors may have been in operation on prehistoric Earth. Paul Kuroda in 1956 predicted the conditions under which nuclear fission may develop and continue in a study. After waiting for 16 years, he was proven right. Two billion years ago, in the area now known as Babin, West Africa, 70 naturally occurring nuclear fission reactors were in operation. A full century before the first commercial nuclear power facilities were built by humans in the 1950s. The energy output of these organic nuclear reactors was small. In 1972, while exploring their former territory of Gabon in Africa, French geologists gathered samples of uranium ore from the Oklo mine. Typically, there are three different isotopes of uranium found in uranium ore. 238U, 235U, and 234U. Different isotopes of the same element exist due to small differences in the number of neutrons in their nuclei. However, uranium-235 can sustain nuclear chain reactions and interest scientists the most. And uranium oil is normally constituted of 0.72% uranium-235. Uranium-238 is the most common variety, while uranium-234 is the rarest. Despite this, the French scientists found that the uranium ore only contained 0.717% uranium at 235, a seemingly insignificant difference that actually had major implications. During a routine isotopic test of Gabonese uranium ore, the French stumbled upon a somewhat unusual finding. Given that uranium is a key ingredient in the production of nuclear bombs and other such weapons, the French nuclear establishment found this shortage to be deeply frightening. Moreover, it is only present in low amounts in the Earth's crust, the Moon, and even meteorites. Because of this, they speculated that about 200 kilos of uranium-235 had vanished. The 0.003% uranium that went missing had not been stolen or burned up. Rather, it had undergone a nuclear fission reaction and disintegrated into its component parts. The uranium found in Gabon turned out to be the first ever discovered natural nuclear reactor, proving the existence of something very exceptional. 
Scientists and government officials in the nuclear industry soon recalled Kuroda and others' old work and made the connection that some of that uranium-235 had been utilized in a natural nuclear reactor two billion years ago. This meant that the uranium-235 content of the ore had dropped significantly. In the 1950s, when the first nuclear power plant went online, it generates so little power that it confused scientists. In comparison, a mine in Africa that was never supervised produced nuclear power thousands of years ago. A total of 16 natural nuclear reactors were found in the Oklo uranium mines. About 30 kilometers southeast of Oklo, in a place called Bangombe, was discovered the 17th in a sequence of biological reactors. Since nuclear reactions need very certain settings, this seemed quite impossible. The reactor in the scenario was not a man-made device, but rather a patch of naturally occurring uranium in the Oklo mine carbon. The rocky environment and high temperatures may have been ideal for triggering nuclear reactions in the radioactive uranium. For a nuclear reaction to take place, several things must be in place. These include a number of neutrons, a regulating substance like water, and a supply of uranium. Scientists have come up with a variety of theories for this puzzling finding. According to one widely held belief, even though 0.72% uranium may not seem like much, it was sufficient for a nuclear fission reaction. Uranium-235 naturally breaks down into thorium and releases a neutron. In the end, this neutron satisfies the second neutron requirement, and the fission reaction commences with the involvement of another uranium-235 atom. The process of fission can be simplified into the process of energy and some neutrons by the fragmentation of atoms. Uranium-236 is an unstable byproduct of the neutron's combination with uranium-235. As a result of its extreme instability, the newly discovered isotope decays into a variety of stable subatomic particles and a few neutrons. When atoms collide, neutrons are released, which can then unite with others. The third necessary condition for controlling chemicals was the presence of a natural groundwater flow. Neutrons are released as energy when atoms decay. The neutrons have been slowed by the water and the energy would have heated the water to the point where it boiled. Eventually, all of the water would have boiled away and the neutrons would have gained their full speed. If the reaction is stopped, it's because the neutrons have gone into the ground without colliding with anything. After then, the groundwater from the natural flow would seep it until there was enough to begin the process again. In all likelihood, this loop lasted for tens of thousands of years more. Eventually, all of the uranium-235 was consumed and the reaction stalled. In the end, the reactor slowed to a stop, leaving behind only a few clues as to its previous existence, including the mystery of, of the vanished uranium. Each reactor in Gabon could power about a thousand standard bulbs with an average output of 100 kilowatts. Nuclear power stations that use commercial pressurized boiling water reactors may generate 1 gigawatt, or enough energy to power 10 million standard light bulbs. Despite their relatively low power output, the nuclear reactors in Gabon are notable because they began operating on their own some 2 billion years ago and continued doing so for up to a million years. Long-term geologic storage of nuclear waste is conceivable, as demonstrated by the Gabon reactor's success in storing various radioactive byproducts of nuclear fission for 2 billion years. These are nuclear power plants made by nature. Even more impressive than the reactors themselves may be how well they are kept up over time. There have been nuclear power plants for 2 billion years. The Gabon reactor will last as long as the African continental crust stays stable and the uranium resources are kept away from oxidizing groundwater. The carbonaceous materials and clay that surrounded the natural nuclear reactors and created and kept reducing conditions may have kept uranium and other radioactive byproducts of nuclear fission from moving in and out of the reactors. People think that there may have been natural nuclear reactors running in more places on Earth 2 billion years ago. Maybe there are more naturally occurring nuclear reactors that we haven't found yet, or maybe radioactive remains of these reactors have been corroded, oxidized, and dissolved for a long time. Experts say, though, that the natural nuclear reactors in Gabon are still one of a kind and more irreplaceable than most valuable things from the Moon and Mars. The Gabon reactors were stable, ran for a long time, and have been around for 2 billion years. Because of this, scientists can learn a lot about nuclear power and how to deal with nuclear waste by studying these rare natural reactors. 
In other words, it seemed that nature can manage a nuclear reactor just as well as humans can. The fission reactors in Gabon are the only ones of their kind in the world. If the rich uranium ore were mined, all close 60 natural nuclear reactors would be lost. To study these unique nuclear reactors, scientists can only use a tiny number of uranium samples, sometimes accompanied by scanned field notes. During the late 1990s, there was a risk that the last natural nuclear reactor, Bangobe, would be mined. In a letter to Nature published in 1997, the physicist François Gauthier Lefebvre questioned the Bangobe uranium mining. It was stated that the last known natural fission reactor on Earth is likely to be mined this year. These natural reactors are one of a kind, therefore it's important to keep at least one around for use in an ongoing and future scientific endeavors. Oklo is home to the majority of Gabon's atomic power plants and the country's largest uranium mine in the France Basin. After 1998, all of this deposit will have been mined. As a result, researchers will have to rely on old materials, many of which lack proper documentation and are no longer in their proper geological setting, to continue working on these reactors. However, 30 kilometers from Oklo in a tiny uranium deposit called Bangombe, where there is a reactor where work may still be done despite the lack of uranium. We recommend keeping this one-of-a-kind, scientifically significant deposit around for future study. These artifacts are as rare and irreplaceable as any found on the Moon or Mars. Since its discovery in 1972, scientists have explored the mystery of why natural nuclear reactors like those found in Gabon have never been found anywhere else on Earth. The reactors in Gabon remain a mystery to researchers. They were able to reconstruct the operation of these nuclear reactors from the geologic record over the course of 40 years. With uranium-235 at such a low percentage of the element's native form, you may be wondering why. The proportion of uranium-235 had been greater earlier in Earth's history, wood and fission reactors would have evolved much more likely. Nuclear reactors first emerged in uranium deposits 2 billion years ago. Having a large abundance of the uranium-235 isotope is merely one of four necessary conditions for the development of a natural nuclear reactor. Another necessary condition is a high concentration of uranium. But scientists have concluded that the Earth had no appreciable uranium concentrations before about 2 billion years ago. It's not hard to phantom why oxygen and only trace levels of uranium may be found in most of Earth's rock. Typically, uranium is concentrated utilizing hydrothermal circulation, which collects the element and concentrates it in a new hydrothermal deposit. For this hydrothermal circulation to thicken the uranium and take it up in the water, the uranium must be soluble. However, uranium solubility can present certain difficulties. When tents are made out of uranium, it forms extremely stable compounds that are extremely difficult to dissolve in their U4 plus reduced form. However, in its oxidized form U6+, uranium forms soluble complexes easily. When the atmosphere had so little oxygen, it would have been very hard to concentrate a lot of uranium because there was no oxygen to turn uranium into its soluble form. But the Great Oxidation Event, which started about 2.4 billion years ago, caused the amount of oxygen in the air to jump from 1% to 15%. Do you think nuclear power will be our new source of energy? Type down your thought in the comment section below. If you found this video informative, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click on the notification bell if you want to see more of our videos.